and welcome to the great Floridians who have come here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You can sit down. You know, I, I, uh, I started running last April 9th, and um, I started running last April 9th, and uh, winning November 2nd was because of what y'all did. So thank you very, very much. It's, 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 you know, it's really nice to see people that you saw through the entire campaign. Uh, when you, when, I'll tell you, when you run for, uh, for statewide office and you see people, it's a lot easier if you stay in the exact same place you saw them the first time. <laughs> so, so you can re remember who they are and everything. But uh, the, uh, you, know, there, uh, you see people that I have, we have a lot of pictures from the campaign. And so you see people out in the audience that you had your picture taken with because we've got all sorts of pictures back in our office. So it's really nice. So thank everybody for coming. Thank everybody for your interest in uh, our state budget. Thank everybody for your interest in Florida. So this is the, this is the greatest state, uh, and we're going to become the number one state for job creation. That's our job. Today, I'm proud to present Florida's first jobs budget. It's a budget that's designed to reduce state spending, lower taxes, and hold your government accountable. This is the budget you asked for. When I ran for governor, I offered Floridians a specific detailed plan, seven steps to 700,000 jobs over seven years, and we talked about it a lot. And this budget puts that into place. This budget puts that plan into place, into action. And, I, and Eric, as I promised to do during the campaign, it, we reduce state spending by over $5 billion. And we return $2 billion directly to you, the taxpayers. $2 billion. I've been in business for 35 years, and I know the importance of, of focusing on clear goals. And this jobs budget is focused on clear, clear uh, goals. It's focused on the goal of shrinking government, reducing your taxes, creating private sector jobs, not more government jobs. Yeah. And holding your government accountable. It's your government, and we should, we can, no, no elected official can ever forget that it's your government. It's not a budget that dabbles. It doesn't offer a little something for every special interest or sweeteners for special people. It's a two-year budget that faces realities absolutely right now. It doesn't put them off for later. It makes the hard decisions, but it makes the right decisions for Florida's long-term future, a bright future. The fact is the government has, has got to get back to its core functions, but only its core functions. And we, as long as 1.1 million Floridians, 1.1 million Floridians are out of work, we can't afford a government that runs wild with taxes, regulation, excessive spending, or lawsuits, frivolous lawsuits. So reviewing a, reviewing a governmental budget is like going through the, an attic in an old home. You come across some priceless things that you need to protect, but there are a lot of odd things that you wonder about that someone once thought we needed. Much of it we've outgrown, and it just doesn't fit anymore. So after over the last three months, I basically, I've spent a lot of time in that attic, and we're cleaning it out. We're getting rid of it. <laughs> There's things we need to dust off and repair and protect, and there are things we need to completely throw away. And as we know what we're doing already with regulation, we've got to re-examine this all the time. We can't just say we started this five years ago, so we're going to keep funding it forever and ever. Someone told me about a program the other day that they started, and it was $5,000 when they started, and now 20 years later, it's a $5 million project. So, so let's start with the obvious. We can't spend more than we take in. And we take in enough from hardworking Floridians. We don't need it to be taken in anymore. 
as you know, over the last few years, Florida has accepted one-time handouts from the federal government, wrongly. Those temporary resources allowed our state and our local governments to spend way beyond their means. Think about it, that's like someone who wins the lottery thinking they're gonna win it every year, so they're gonna keep spending all the time. You know, you, you know if you win the lottery, you're not gonna have win it again next year, right? Well, that's the same with government spending. It just doesn't make sense. There was never any reason to think that Florida taxpayers could afford to continue that higher level of spending once the federal handouts were gone. The false expectation, expectations created by the federal handouts are the reason we're hearing about a, a multi-billion dollar deficit in our state budget. Some have been accustomed to the artificially high level of state spending made possible by the money the federal government borrowed from our grandchildren, but no longer. That level of spending was never wise and simply cannot be sustained. To those who suggest we meet these new unsustainable expectations with higher taxes, I want to send a clear signal. That is not the answer. We will not increase taxes in Florida. For the last four years, most Florida families and families across the country have had to learn to live with less at home. Most of us are making, most people are not making what they made four years ago. Even those who have continued to find work have been forced to make big sacrifices. There are places where several generations are crowded into tight quarters. They've given up all the extras because it's what they had to do and they didn't want to become, they didn't want to become dependent on government. Floridians shouldn't have to spend more of their money to Tallahassee to pay for non-essential government programs or solely fund the retirement programs of government employees. Let's never forget that government has no resources of its own. None. Government can only give to us what is previously taken from us, minus a significant cut for the government middleman. Now this jobs budget reduces taxes for Florida taxpayers, it's going to energize the economy, and it's going to get Floridians back to work. We will reduce the business taxes from 5.5% to 3%, completely And we will completely phase it out by 2018. We're going to cut property taxes by $1.4 billion over, over the next two years. So together, we'll cut four, over $4 billion in taxes over the next two years. Without any cuts out of the state general revenue for education. Zero cuts out of the state rev general revenue for education. Critics have said you can't cut taxes now. They repeat the same misguided claims we hear from what's that city? Washington, D.C. They are wrong. We will cut taxes now. And they should cut taxes now. Things are not going to improve until we figure out how to grow private sector jobs, not government jobs. Yeah. 